Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are, however you're watching this, thank you for joining me in the studio as I paint this uh, Jurassic, Triassic, Cretaceous, I don't know what period, dinosaur head. Love dinosaurs. Uh, this was an interesting image that I saw online, and I wanted to paint it. I hope you guys enjoy uh, painting this along with me, or at least watching and listening as I'm painting it. Let me get a few of the incidentals out of the way on this. I'm painting on Fabriano Studio watercolor paper. That's mostly pulp, 25% cotton, 9 by 12. I'm using my King Art brushes again this time. Lovely brushes. These are the 9020 series. Uh, they are pointed round and a synthetic bristle. Very nice brushes. I like them very much. And the paints that I'm using are my M. Graham paints. Been using them for about 15 years and uh, never ever want to go back to anything else. They're fantastic. There's the reference photo. You can see it in the upper right hand corner. I think that's pretty much a uh, generic uh, looking dinosaur head. Big jaws, lots of teeth menacing eye actually as i look at this guy he doesn't look menacing i'm i try to make up stories about everything i paint and uh the story I, I i've told myself about this guy is that he's not menacing he's not mean he's not angry he's a little surprised he just walked out of the forest into a clearing He's heard some noises. He's looking up to see what it is, and, and that's the image that we have. We're kind of looking up at his head as he, uh, as he just reared up to look around to see what's behind him. Okay, as we go through this, I'm going to talk about the colors that I use and why I'm choosing them and, and how I'm using them. Uh, he's got a little bit of musculature here on the side of his mouth. And all of the colors in his mouth, well, most of the colors anyways, are done with a mixture of neutral tints and pyrrol red. From time to time, we're going to throw in some alizarin crimson uh, just to change the color up a bit. And if I get a little sloppy pulling the paint off my palette, I'll probably dip into a little bit of maroon perylene. Um, maroon perylene, probably another color that everybody has on their palette. It's a warm red, very dark, uh, very nice color. Here's that red color. As I said, this is mostly pyrrole red with a little bit of neutral tint thrown in there. Just trying to get his Get his mouth there. There we go. Right around all those teeth. It's going to make it easier to see those teeth. We're going to make those stand out later in the video. Really pop off later. And back in here, some neutral tint to darken that up. Really uh, set up that difference between the red in the back of his throat and the red on his uh a jaw muscle there you can already see there's quite a difference and they're both basically the same colors all right so that's the first layer of paint on there I did try to keep it a little bit warmer a little bit greener on the top you know where it's in the Sun and under his chin down here where I'm painting right now uh, a little grayer a little whiter yeah, I'm, uh, I imagine that area doesn't get as much sunshine, uh, doesn't get exposed quite as much. It's a little softer, a little whiter. So we'll keep it a little, a little lighter color. Um, so uh, I'm trying to set out right now, as you see me dabbling on some paint. Uh, 
some roundness to his to his jawline. Right, I want to make his lips kind of round, um, where they come from his teeth, uh, down to the side of his jaw, and I want to make the bottom of his jaw round. Um, and then we'll have kind of a strip in the middle that we'll have to do something with. And the same thing on the top of his head. Uh, we're going to make it round kind of where his lips would be on his top jaw, and then round it off uh, up where his snout is. Under here, we've got one real task to do. Put in some basic color and make a dividing line between that jaw and the rest of his neck. That's going to help his jaw stand out away from his, his neck and give him some dimensionality. This is a little yellow ochre, a little bit of olive green, and just way back on the back side of the neck back there, just to really accentuate that difference, dropped just a touch of ultramarine blue. And here we go. This is, this is my next attempt to give some roundness to the bottom of that jaw. You can kind of see it there. It's a little unfortunate. It stops where it does, but you can, you can begin to see what I'm talking about. We'll continue to develop this as the painting goes on. Well, we've got to do some up here, too. A little bit of yellow ochre. Kind of where his, I'm calling them his lips. I don't know if dinosaurs actually have lips. I, I suppose they do. And as we go to the top of his snout or his nose, um, that's transitioning into some, there it is right there, transitioning into some olive green. And I can, I can really smooth that out or I can let that stay and get a little marbled in there. We're going to come back and do a lot of work on that snout as this painting uh, progresses. Watercolors are really funny in that you start to paint them and initially you look at it and you go, that looks great. I love the way this is going. And then somewhere you cross a line and you go, this isn't going the way I thought it was going to go. But you keep going, you persist and before long, you're back on track to uh, where your painting looks like you want it to look again. Uh, it's funny how it oscillates between the two. All right, here in his mouth, right? We're back to a couple of colors, pyrrole red and neutral tint. Started using neutral tint a few years ago, and I really like it. I was a little dissatisfied with how people are taught in general that if you have a shadow, you have to put blue on there. Drop a little ultramarine blue. That will help with your shadow. Well, I guess it will help you with your shadow. Um, but it casts kind of a different tint to all your painting. And so I think that neutral tint is a very uh, good alternative to this. I hear the muscle in the front, all right, doing the same thing as inside the mouth. This is this is pyrrole red, very 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 wet, um, just only a small amount of color towards the front of that muscle, and as it works back into his jaw, and as it goes up under his top lip, a little bit more of that neutral tint. Uh, and you can see it there. It looks great. It's a nice graded wash all the way across that muscle. All right. Uh, the next big thing, I've got a few wet areas. The next big thing I can work on where it's not wet is beginning to put some dark underneath this eye ridge. I'm calling it an eye ridge. It's kind of a big brow. I guess it's a brow ridge. I don't know what you call it. 
this massive uh, this massive bump that's out there. And I don't want to just push color all the way to the edge of this uh, because the very edge of it's much lighter. So you'll see me just like that, pulling some of that color off again uh, so that it doesn't extend quite all the way out. There we go. Let's just make sure that we're allowing there, 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 that color to a blend very nicely and very smoothly out to the edge. All right. There it is. So I look at that and and in years past I would have gone, that's not nearly dark enough. And I would have just piled on some colors to make that dark and been done with it in one layer. Uh, this time I'm going to I'm going to kind of leave that as it is and I'm trying to do more layers, thinner layers um, on each layer, less paint on each layer, uh, and just continuing to go back and back. So that little bit I just did, he's got a hump in the middle of his, his head, and in order to differentiate that color just a little bit, instead of using just olive green, I threw a little bit of cobalt green in there also. I've got a couple of greens on my palette. Cobalt green, phthalo green, olive green, and azo green. I've chosen those specifically for my palette. Uh, I like them very much. The cobalt green and the olive green um, match nicely with the greens in the area where I live. And uh, I don't have to do a whole lot of mixing if I ever take my palette out and do some plein air painting, or if I take a picture and bring it back to the studio to paint um, those areas around me. The phthalo green mixes wonderfully with everything. Um, just a nice color, and the, the azo green gives a nice bright pop, like a shiny uh, green apple color, kind of. All right, so I'm defining a few scales. I'm going to call them scales, but areas above his teeth. And, and this is the one area on this painting I wish I had done differently. I wish I had defined the roundness of that lip before I had done this. If I were to do this over again, that's one thing I would do. Uh, and we will have to address that later in uh, this video. It just isn't going to work to have those scales be quite as flat as they are all right so i've looked at my painting and if you look at that lower jaw that lower jaw the roundness stops right where the neck starts so i can get around that by um, painting a little further up around that the back of that jawline but in order to do that, I'm going to have to darken up the chin behind it. So that's what I just did. And here I'm trying to just keep that upper lip, upper jaw going. Keep it a little bit round. Yeah, see, I just noticed, I just noticed, I pointed it out to myself. I just noticed that I should have kept that, uh, I should not have painted those scales in there. Uh, it was a big mistake on my part. Come on, Michael. There we go. Now we're getting the whole jaw. There it is. I just want to put a little bit of color there and just, just pull that back a little bit. Let, let a very nice soft edge come all the way around. And if I extend that the whole way now, you can see now it looks as though, there we go. Now it looks as though there's some, some real dimension to that lower jaw. Now we're starting to get it. Uh-huh. That upper jaw still needs some work. But the jaw is still wet. Let's go back and darken this eye again. Because this eye is such a big focal point, I want to give it a little bit of love. Do a little bit of extra work up here with it. 
There we go. I'm not still not done with it yet, but it's getting there. And you can see that that brow ridge, that eye ridge, now extends down onto his snout a little bit. Uh, if we continue to darken around it, back, yep, on that little horn back there, sure. That's going to accentuate that brow ridge too. And then everything on the back side of it will help out also. Now, I've, I've basically got him defined the way I want, right? A couple layers of paint on there starting to look good. Now I can start to add that second layer of everything in here, right? So I'm going to put some dark underneath his lip. There we go. And that's going to help define things on the bottom side of it. Just starting, that's, that's awfully light. Uh, we're going to do more to darken that, but as we start to add color a little here and a little there, we're going to start to build out all these profiles. Just thinking about what needs to be done here. What needs to be done? What areas are dry that I can go to? I still see. I want to go back and do that eye. I want to go back and do it. But it's still a bit wet. That's kind of his eye on the other side over there. If you don't know what that is, that's not another horn. That's that's his eye on the other side, so we can kind of, you know, see and have binocular vision there. All right, I looked at this. I looked at this, and I went, I am really going to define that brow ridge. I'm just going to bring that color all the way out. Yep, if that brow ridge, there you go, if that brow ridge extends down onto his snout, that, that adds a little depth onto his head. Yeah, underneath his jaw, I need to re-darken that. I need to do a little bit up there. I need a little bit, a little bit up there. But I didn't like the color of his muscles here. I'm just going to re-darken that a little bit. Again, there's a little bit of... Alizarin Crimson tossed in here. It's going to give that a little pop of color. That Alizarin Crimson is such a powerful color. But it's mixed in there with that Pyrol Red. Pyrol Red may be another color that not everybody uses. It's, I would define Pyrol Red as like classic fire engine red. That's kind of what it is. There we go. Now we got something going. Look how much that muscle pops right off of there. That looks good to me. All right, we got to work on this. We got to work on this upper lower jaw, the upper lip on the lower jaw. Does that make sense at all? Put some color on there. If we can allow that color to do some of that work on its own, that's awesome. If it won't work with us, we'll we'll blend it out and we'll get it to do what we want it to. Yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at some areas up here. Yeah, look see. What's dry, what's wet? That upper lip needs some work. <laughs> but I can't stay away from the eye. I love love working on that eye. And the darkness that goes into this eye is really going to help uh, bring out the lighter areas on this painting. You can't have lights if you don't have darks. We need to make some dark areas on here. Yeah, I don't think I'm quite done yet. Let's pull that out. There, there, there. I do like to fiddle with my colors quite a bit. Some people put things on in large washes and and work quickly. I like to work in a small area and then blend out from there. I don't know how I developed that trait, uh, but that's one thing I do. It's harder for me to put water on in a larger area, just like I did right there and, and be able to deal with it. I, I, I do a lot better work wet on dry and then 
wet the rest of the area and blend it out rather than I do wet on wet. Sometimes I struggle a little bit working wet on wet. But if you st if you look at that like his lower cheek there, uh, you can start to see as I'm starting to darken that up. You can see some some definition coming into that jaw. Right there's there's definitely something starting on the bottom. I don't want to push it too fast. Uh, I'm willing to work slowly. If I were doing this as a live video or a demonstration, I might might go a little bit more quickly. But as I'm doing this on my own, I've got plenty of time. I can put it on a layer and layer and layer and get it kind of exactly how I want. So you can see those two dark areas on that lower jaw really are giving some, some definition to it, really bringing some interest to it. In the end, we'll connect those two areas and really, uh, really make it look like there's some musculature and some bone structure underneath there. Now on the top of his snout up here, I just put in some olive green with a little bit of cobalt green in there maybe just a touch of phthalo green to really make that color pop out of there phthalo green is kind of like a loser in crimson in that it's it's very strong it does mix quite nicely with other colors but it is very strong if you use it on its own it will overwhelm you or can easily overwhelm you, I guess is the way to say it. But if you mix it with other colors, it plays pretty nicely. All right. Maybe he's got some color on the back of his head there, I guess. Now I've waited long enough. I guess it's time for me to address the lip i'm going to call it his lip his upper lip yeah uh, i put the color on it wasn't quite dark enough when i blended it out i don't want a hard line there when i blended it out it kind of pulled it away i've got to drop in a little bit extra need to add to it a little bit and just just soften that edge Now, if you're watching this and you're saying, uh, Michael, why, why are you doing your entire painting upside down or on its side? Well, the answer is, uh, I never learned to paint with the uh, paper taped down. And, and as such, uh, as I taught myself to paint, I, I moved the paper around quite a bit so that I can get the brush at whatever angle I want to get it at, whatever's easiest for me. And um, it works great to paint with. Sometimes it's... Uh, sometimes <laughs> it is a bit much to watch uh, because the paper does move quite a bit. And so I apologize for that a little bit. Um, I'm not overly apologetic about that because uh, in the end, the goal is to, uh, you know, produce the best painting possible. But uh, I do realize that from time to time, it, it, it is a little distracting. So uh, I, I, I apologize for that. I hope uh, that there's enough of this that is uh, the right way up for you all and that you're able to follow along. All right, here I go. This is where I, I think I got lost a little bit on his snout. I want to make some you know, kind of indentations, and I, I think I would have done a little better not doing quite so wet in wet, doing a little bit more wet onto dry, but it's okay. We'll put it on here. In the end, it's going to work out. 
maybe it's just not going to quite work out the way I thought initially. But it's all good. Dinosaurs have crazy skin. Lots of pits and things going on on their skin. And so I'm okay with the way it looks. We'll get to we'll get to where it needs to be. He's got a little he's got a little something down here. Maybe he's got some muscles that are flexing uh, down here on his neck and creating a little hollow. That's what that's what that is. There you go. All right now that I made the the bottom of that jawline. A little darker. I need to come in and re-darken underneath his chin. And there it is. That really makes that jaw stand out. I mean, it really makes it stand out now. And his neck comes up. Maybe I'm going to call that a shoulder on the other side. I don't. I, I, maybe not a shoulder like. Like people have, but uh, he's got a shoulder. I, I'm assuming he walks on on all four legs. This is his front shoulder joint. I'm going to put a little bit of detail work around that eye to really, really make it highlighted. There we go. One more. Down there now, I've got to watch. I can't let that line I just put in there, I can't let that affect the jawline below. There we go. Let's make sure that that blends really nicely and not into the roundness of the jawline, but gives us some texture up there on the top. I really like that. I really like that. Yeah, I mean, still, still not happy. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have painted in those scales so early. I've got to, definitely got to come back and fix those. All right, this area is darker back there, of course. If I, if I darken that up, right, that's neutral tint back there. Could drop just a touch of blue on there if I wanted to. Blue will push things back further, but uh darken that up that's going to make that look like it kind of wraps around behind him oh and if you're wondering yes uh, i do have to address address the teeth we're going to get to that very shortly uh, and we do have a background that we need to put on here those are all coming up very soon But we'll put the scales back in just, just a little bit, just to give the indication of them. They were way too dark, way too pronounced before. We've got a few layers on, on top of them, and uh, we've pushed them down a little bit, maybe a little bit too much. Okay, just, just barely dark enough that those scales are going to stand out right around his his teeth right if i want them to stand out a little bit more i can just darken that up those few back towards the back of his mouth a little darker i do take quite a bit of time to assess my painting as I'm doing it to try to look to see where I'm at step back for a minute and take a look to see where I'm at with the painting and if I look away and look back to it I can see maybe what what areas I need to focus on that little bit I put in his eye that was just a tiny bit of ultramarine blue I don't want the pupils of his eyes to be bright white. I'm happy with that being uh, slightly off color. And I think blue is, 
It's a good color. It won't distract much of anything. And here I'm, I'm, you know, darkening the color in his mouth a little bit. As it gets to the top of his mouth, which is, of course, closer to us uh, in the viewer of the painting, it's a little bit darker, a little bit more of that neutral tint. And as it goes to the back side of his mouth, uh, maybe it's open to the it's open to the uh, to the light a little bit more. Maybe there's some reflected light in there, so uh, that gets a little less paint, a little less saturation of paint, and a little bit more of the uh, pyrrol red. Same thing here. The further back in his throat it goes, the darker the color, the a little bit heavier of mixture, but definitely more neutral back there. And as it works out to the outside of the front, a little less neutral, a little more of that pyrrol red. If my camera would focus, you could see it. There it is. And just have a nice gradation all the way out there. I think you can see it right there. Some beautiful red right out at the end and it gets darker as it goes back. Telling myself, yes, I need to, I need to keep those colors different. And uh, the reference photo, I'm going to throw it back up there in just a second. But the reference photo shows this kind of as two muscles. Um, so I'm just kind of putting that on there. Two muscles. Uh, a little yellow for his eye here. Sometimes I wait till the very end to paint an eye on a creature. Um, I think once you paint um, his eye, that really starts to determine his uh, personality. And sometimes if you paint it too early, uh, you start to change your perception of the of uh, the image that you're painting and and uh, you can change how you paint. So uh, I, I usually like to leave that pretty late uh, to do the eye, but not, not always. In this case, I put it on there. I'll put his pupil on there uh, fairly shortly. We'll get to that. All right, now I guess it's time for the teeth. And... As I think about this guy, uh, I think he hasn't gone to the dentist in a while, and his teeth aren't exactly white. This is a really light wash of some yellow ochre, and we've got some Payne's Gray tossed in there to tone it down a little bit. And you'll see as I work through these that I've actually put a little bit of burnt umber on his teeth also maybe maybe he's got some deep grooves or some pitting in there i'm trying to i'm trying to uh, think of some of the terms that uh, my dentist has used with my teeth some pitting right on his teeth and and he's probably a meat eater doesn't you know eat a whole lot of vegetables i assume maybe he's had some uh some meat stuck on there for a little bit. There you go. And it's it's caused a little uh, bit of discoloration, maybe. I don't know. I, I like the teeth on the front there. Uh, the ones on the back, we're seeing the back of these teeth. So I'm going to paint those with a little bit more blue in them. There's our reference photo popped up. Right, my my photo or my painting, my photo, my painting isn't uh, too different than that. I, there, you kind of see them side by side. I think I like mine a little bit better. I might be biased, probably slightly biased. But there we go. There's our there are all of our teeth in the back. You can start to see them standing out a little bit. I'm just maybe had a few errant brush strokes there. I wasn't quite as precise maybe as I needed to be. I'll just tap those in. A 
basically what I'm doing is I'm just getting rid of any white <laughs> that's on those. One of my pet peeves, and it doesn't need to be because I don't think it always d detracts from your painting, is I don't like white spots on my painting uh, where you've just not quite gotten paint all the way to another bit of paint. Uh, one of the things I always try to do is go back through my painting and uh, clean up all of those little white spots. For me, it's, it's kind of a big deal. For many people, it's not a big deal at all. Uh, in reality, I think it doesn't matter. I think it can look good both ways. All right, we've got some teeth there. We're pretty much done with those. Now, the, 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 the teeth on the lower jaw are really uh, hard to see. Those will come into their own when we paint his tongue and when we paint the background uh, behind this guy. You'll really start to see those teeth pop out. They'll be easier to see. Ah, oh, there's his there's his eye. Like I said, now he now he's got a personality, and uh, that's why I said um, he looks he looks kind of like he's startled a little bit more than he's angry. Yeah, just just gonna connect and make that brow ridge stand right out. I do like the darkness of that eye. That eye socket or the eye cove. I don't know what you call it. Where his eye is. And a little shadow on that eye. That's just a just a little line of neutral tint in there. <clears throat> part of that eye is in shadow and part is not in shadow. Alright, we've got a little bit more to do. Oh, that's a that's a little bit of his jaw on the other side over there. I'll just drop drop that in. And it's at this point in time that <clears throat> excuse me, I really need to think about uh, how do I how do I make his skin look? Right? He's all nice and smooth right now. Do I want to keep with that or do I want to uh, really give him some craggly skin and the answer is I'm going to give him some uh, craggly skin and I'm going to start with a liner brush and just start dropping some of that in now with a liner brush you can make straight lines that aren't straight and that will further help enhance the look of a uh, uh, that will further help define a round feature. Um, if you make some curved lines, I think you'll see what I'm what I'm talking about uh, as we as we continue on with this. <clears throat> Just darkening up a couple of areas, right? Right below his snout. Maybe it 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 folds in a little bit. I don't know. Something like that. But I'm going to drop in some lines here and there. I'm trying not to make them evenly spaced. I'm trying not to make them uh, look like they've been drawn in by some guy sitting in his studio with a rigger uh, brush. But you can see right there, especially uh, once I put those, once I put those uh, squiggly lines on his eye, all of a sudden the, that area uh, gained a little extra life. I think. I think. All right. Just continuing to give him some some definition and some texture here and there. Now we will have to go back and darken some of these lines up. I put them on and they lightened a little too much, a little bit more than I wanted them to. So we will be fixing some of that. <clears throat> and it looks like I ran into a little bit of a hard line there. 
a tide line. I probably don't want a tide line. Yeah, there we go. Now we can see. We can really see the curvature of of that of that jaw, that upper lip there. Connect those two spaces. You can see maybe maybe that big muscle uh, uh, connects into that that jaw there, like a big pocket maybe when he closes his mouth. Well, let's let's get some lines on his neck. I think. Oop, or not. I'm trying to use where there's a little bit more ochre on his on his face on the jaws, uh, or on the, the lips. I mean, I'm trying to uh, draw lines with something that's a little bit more ochery in color, <clears throat> where. Where there's a little bit more of that Payne's gray. <clears throat> I'm using a little bit more Payne's gray to draw those lines or neutral tint. And where there's quite a bit of olive green, I'll use olive green to draw those lines. I want it to match the color that it's that it's going on to. I don't want it to be too different. <clears throat> And there we go. We're we're mostly done. I need to redo a couple of these lines. A little let's strengthen his eye a little bit here. Very few things need to be done at this point on this guy. Some lines on his neck. I'm wondering when those were going to come. There they are. And again, there's what there's our reference photo. That's what we started with. Not exactly what mine looks like, and that's okay. I don't mind not duplicating my reference photo because it's a reference, it's not a, a copy. And uh, now, <clears throat> now I'm going to put a background on everything. Just going to get some of uh, this area wet. Using a little bit of cerulean blue here for the background. I very much like that reference photo. It's just his head sticking up in the sky. I'm going to pull that color out. Just working my way around, trying to keep a wet edge as I work and let the color go on and, and blend all the way out or as far out as it wants to go. Drop some color. Oh, I got a little, <clears throat> looks like I got a little bit of maybe the red from whatever that mouth color was. Neutral and pyrol red. Looks like I got a little bit of that in there. Uh, this isn't actually color I'm putting in. <clears throat> it is color, but I'm just trying to, to get all of this wet. So you'll see a big bead that's following my brush all the way down, I'm trying to i get that wet and simultaneously keep a wet edge behind this guy so that when I come in and put some color in, it's going to go and it's going to run into some of these areas. Keep that edge wet right there. There, 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 there. Push that color all the way up in between those teeth. Make those stand out a little bit. There we go, and we're almost done with our background. A couple of things need to happen before we're done. I told you we would paint his tongue on there, and we haven't painted his tongue, so that'll need to get done. And I think we need to darken a few extra lines here and there, but that's probably about it. Uh, yeah, yeah, my, my clouds are a little weird in the, in the sky. That's fine. Yep, I just noticed. I forgot to paint the tongue. I'm so glad I'm going to do it now. And I'm going to darken a few of these lines. I'm going to go mostly over top of them. If I don't go exactly over top, I'm not worried too much about it. 
There we go. Just enhance a couple of those lines. We don't need all of them done again. But a few of them here and there will really help. I'm mixing some paint off the palette right now. Got to get to that tongue. That's really, this is really going to help the teeth stand out. There we go. Already you can see teeth coming to life. Already. So there is a, still a little neutral tint in there, and we're gonna we're gonna um, make it a little more red as we come out to the end, I believe. Yep, already you can see it's much more red. Just like everybody's tongue, it's a little got a little bit of red in there. Huh? It's quite red, right? There it is. There it is. A couple more spots wonderful wonderful love it love it so i'm going to take a moment to say if you like this video give a like down below if there's something you'd like to see me paint leave a comment about it i do love uh, a challenge so i usually have in my mind things i like to paint and I'll just trudge along with those, but if there's something anybody would like to see, throw it into the comments down below, and you never know, I might, I might pick it up and start painting it. I do have links down below to some of my social media. Um, if you're so inclined, there's a, there's a wonderful place down there you could donate to help keep me in art supplies. I do do a live stream here on YouTube on Wednesday nights. It's kind of a fun, light-hearted approach to watercolor pa uh, painting. It's a pretty steady group there. and We all have a lot of fun. So anybody who wants to join that, you're more than welcome. We'd love to have you there. <clears throat> and that's about it for me. Uh, there's my dinosaur. I think he turned out pretty good. I want to thank you all for joining me here in the studio as I walk through this painting of a dinosaur, my take on what a dinosaur might look like. I appreciate you all. Until next time, thank you all, my, all so much for watching. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.